Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to your channel the anatomy canvas so in today's class of uh, uh, in today's class of mcqs we are going to discuss with the mcqs of embryology and histology of git and renal system and please remember i have taken these mcqs from internal exams of different medical colleges and in certain mcqs there are certain problems either two options are correct so i have a uh, cleared the, um, these mcqs with explanation in this lectures so now let's start so first mcq in today's class is that is the chief cells of the gastric mucosa secretes the trypsin the bicarbonate ions pepsinogen HCl and the gastrin. So the correct option is that they secrete the pepsinogen. This is the correct option. Next MCQ is the pyloric stenosis is characterized by vomiting, usually starting in second or third week after the birth, which become increasingly projectile. The narrowing of the pyloric lumen results primarily from either the diaphragm-like narrowing of the pyloric lumen are so called fetal vascular accidents in pylorus the hypertrophy of the circular smooth muscle cells hypertrophy of longitudinal smooth muscle cells are persistence of the solid stage of the pyloric development so this is basically the pyloric stenosis and these are the different condition out of this condition first look at this diagram so in this condition you can see the, uh, this is the inner coat the circular muscle layer and the outer coat and this circular muscle uh, when there is a partial recanalization or absence of the recanalization that leads to the pyloric stenosis and in such a case there is hypertrophy of the uh, circular smooth muscle cell so correct option to the question is the hypertrophy of the circular smooth muscle cell that leads to the pyloric stenosis next is when primary intestinal loops undergo rotation between weeks 6 and 11 which of the following blood vessels lie along the axis around which it rotates very important mcq usually uh, it is present in many uh, exams so these are the different arteries the abdominal aorta the celiac artery inferior mesenteric artery left umbilical vein and superior mesenteric artery so the correct option is the superior mesenteric artery because mid cut loops rotate around the axis formed by the superior mesenteric artery and this is the correct option in this diagram you can also see this is the superior mesenteric artery which is a branch of the descending aorta dorsal aorta and the loops of the mid cut are rotating around the axis formed by the superior mesenteric artery again another mcq through this is that this superior mesenteric artery is the artery of the mid cut so this is very important mcq present in internal exams of many colleges and uh, very important from your professional exams point of view next is during kidney development failure to develop union between the renal vesicle and the collecting tubules may lead to that may be renal agenesis, the horseshoe shaped kidney, polycystic kidneys, pancake kidneys, and pelvic kidneys. So, correct option is renal agenesis because in this uh, diagram you can say this is the um, metanephric blastema or metanephric mesoderm, and uh, this one is this darker color is metanephric mesoderm, and this light pink color area is basically the, uh, the ureteric bud. So, these two. Uh, are responsible for formation of the uh, proper nephrons in the kidney and during development if there is a genesis if there is a failure to develop union between vesicles and collecting tubule it will lead to the agenesis of the kidney next is during development kidneys development the ureteric birds continue to subdivide until 12 or more generations of the tubules have formed the collecting tubules of the fifth and successive generations will form either the collecting duct the minor calices the major calices the renal pyramids or the renal cortex so look at this diagram again you can see in this diagram different generations of the development of the uh, ureteric birds usually 12 generations are present 
the first uh, second generation absorb third and fourth to form the minor calyces calyces and fifth generation and the uh, successive generation then they form the renal pyramid so correct option over here is renal pyramid because the question is about the fifth and successive generation so if it was about second third and fourth then the answer will be the uh, minor and the major calyces Next is in male, the pelvic part of the urogenital sinus will form the prostatic urethra, urinary bladder, penile urethra, ejaculatory ducts are the gonads. So first look at this diagram. The pelvic part of the urogenital sinus will develop initially forming the genital tubercle, also called the phallus. This phallus elongate and on its edges you can see this is the urethral opening and on the sides urethral folds are present and when these folds fuses in the midline they closes the opening and it forms the penile urethra later on there is a, a junction between the penile urethra and outer part uh, from the ectoderm and proper urethral orifice is formed so in this case uh, the pelvic part of urogenital um, sinus will form the penile part of the urethra this is the correct option Next is the GERD that is gastroesophageal reflux disease results from repeated exposure to esophageal mucosa to the gastric acid causing heartburn. So GERD patient may pro progress and develop Barrett's esophagus which is characterized by change of the stratified squamous to stratified columnar epithelium. The results in metaplastic change to simple columnar epithelium, change of simple columnar to stratified squamous epithelium, no change or change of the simple squamous to simple columnar epithelium. So please, please always remember the esophagus is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium. First, second Barrett esophagus is a condition in which there is a metaplasia that is change of one type of epithelium to another epithelium and in this condition the metaplastic changes results in change of the stratified squamous to simple columnar epithelium. So option B is the correct option. Next MCQ is a 52 year old patient presents to medical OPT with the symptoms of progressive dysphagia. First to solids, then to liquid and was diagnosed as a patient of adenocarcinoma of the lower third of the esophagus. Select most appropriate option regarding lower third of esophagus. First contains skeletal and cardiac, skeletal muscles and cardiac gland. Second, mixed skeletal or striated and smooth muscle cells. Then the sympathetic supply is by lumbar splanchnic nerves. Then contain the cardiac glands and the smooth muscle cells and contain no glands in some mucosa. So again, please uh, just memorize the histology of the esophagus this uh, esophagus in upper third in the muscularis of esophagus there are the skeletal muscle in middle third of esophagus there are both skeletal and the striated muscles are present and in lower third of esophagus only the smooth muscle cells are present. So this option mixed striated and smooth muscles is not correct because it is about the lower third. This is correct about the second uh, middle part. It contains skeletal muscles and cardiac glands. No, again it is not correct because in lower third the smooth muscle cells are present. Then sympathetic supply it is also not correct. It contains cardiac gland and smooth muscle cells. Yes, it is the correct option because the cardiac glands are present in the mucosa in the lamina propria of the esophagus in its lower third and also the smooth muscles are present in the muscularis externi of the um, esophagus. Contains no gland in some mucosa. Again, please uh, memorize this that this is the special feature of esophagus that it contains gland in muc submucosa which are called the esophageal glands proper. So correct option over here is D that the lower third contains cardiac gland and smooth muscle cells in muscularis externi. Journey. Next is type of the cartilage present in epiglottis. 
a very simple question just a repetition maybe the hyaline cartilage the fibroelastic membranous periosteum so very easy to remember e for epiglottis and e for elastic cartilage so this is the elastic cartilage which is present in core of epiglottis and this question was present in some of the in exams in the internal exams of some medical colleges that's why i have included in the slide although it is not a part of your course in this unit so correct option in uh, uh, this mcq is c the patient presents with a pernicious anemia due to deficiency of the intrinsic factor so name the cell of the stomach which is responsible for secretion of the intrinsic factor a very simple question either may be chief cell brunner's gland parietal cell mucus cell or entero endocrine cell so we all know that the parietal cell secretes intrinsic factor in addition to hydrochloric acid so this is the correct option next question is a patient came to the emergency room with suddenly originated pain in umbilical area and then after few hours pain radiated to right iliac fossa of the abdomen and diagnosed by emergency doctor as acute appendicitis so the commonest cause of the acute appendicitis is either hereditary hyperplasia of the lymphoid nodules of appendix no it will not cause an acute problem viral infectious hyperplasia may be the reason but not the commonest yes infection of the food material in the appendix is most common cause of the acute appendicitis the worm infestation of the appendix and the uh, option e was both a and e but in this case uh, the infection of the food material in appendix is the most commonest cause of the acute appendicitis the so next question is what is the another term for valves of the cork ring that may be lacteal that may be crypt of lubricant plica circularis that may be striated border or villi so in this case the plica circularis are also called the valve of cork ring and this is also a very important question from your exams point of view most of the time it is present in exams what is the functional unit of the liver that may be portal lobule that may be portal triate that may be central vein it may be hepatocyte or it may be sinusite so the functional unit of the liver is the portal lobule and this is the correct option which type of the papillae on the tongue is most abundant filiform papillae the circumferate the fungiform the foliate and all of above so please please remember the filiform papillae are the only type of the papillae which are most abundant on the tongue these are only type of the papillae which are keratinized and again these are only type of the papillae which do not have any taste buds all other three types of papillae are covered by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and these all of the three are having the taste buds so filiform please remember these are keratinized these are most abundant most numerous and these do not have the uh, taste buds in their core so correct option is a again another question from sure embryology in the development of the mid cut the amphelocyle amphelocyle is not synonymous with congenital umbilical hernia no both are same things the persistent part of the vitelline duct leads to urethral fistula this is urethral fistula is not by the vitelline duct but it is formed by the allantois then superior mesenteric is the axis of rotation of the mid cut yes it is true and vitelline cyst may result from abnormal remodeling of the vitelline we know either vitelline cyst may be the cause of the remodeling of the vitelline veins vitelline veins abnormal remodeling may be a consequence of the vitelline cyst because on both sides of the cyst fibrous cards will be present which will lead to abnormal remodeling of the vitelline vein vitelline vein itself the remodeling is not a cause of the vitelline cyst 
none of the above so correct option in this uh, case is c that is superior mesenteric artery is forming the axis around which mid cut rotates next is regarding foliate papilla in adults are located at posterior third of tongue anterior third of tongue posterior present anterior to the sulcus terminalis present on tip of the tongue and it forms rows on lateral edges of the tongue so please remember on posterior third of tongue, third of the tongue anterior to sulcum uh, terminalis are the papilla which are called circumvillate papilla these are not the foliate then on tip of the tongue most uh, numerous papilla are the filiform so these foliate papillas are present in the form of the rows on lateral edges of the tongue and this is correct option in this diagram you can see these are the foliate papillas these are finger like present in the form of the rows on lateral edges of the tongue again look at this slide these are uh, covered by the stratified squamous non keratinized type of epithelium taste birds are present and their core is branched so these are the typical features of the foliate papilla next is which of the following statement is true regarding ureter they have the star shaped cells inner circularly uh, uh, inner muscles are circularly arranged lined by stratified squamous epithelium lamina propria have no glands and have five cords so please remember ureter uh, has the star shaped lumen not the star shaped cells their inner muscles are the longitudinal and outer muscles are the circularly arranged smooth muscles it is lined by the transitional epithelium it has four cords and lamina propria have no gland so correct option is d look at this diagram this is the star shaped lumen of the uh, ureter in which it is lined by the strati uh, transitional epithelium the first coat is the mucosa then is the submucosa then is muscularis and outer to muscularis is serosa so these are these are the uh, histological features of the ureter next is in which organ do we have eosinophilic penate cells in the body of stomach in the large intestine in fundus of the stomach in pylorus of the stomach or in the small intestine so correct option is small intestine you can see these are the intestinal glands which are formed which are present in the lamina propria and at the basis of the glands the cells are called penates cells which are having lysosomal enzymes and also in this slide you can see at the basis of the glands you can see the penate cells and these penate cells have special standing characteristics because of the granules which contain lysozymes so these penate cells are present in the small intestine tip of the each renal papilla perforated by the opening of the collecting duct is called the area cribrosa the capsule the column of bertin hyalus or medullary ray so look at this diagram this is the scanning electron micrographic picture and this is h and e staining section through the tip of the papilla so in this you can see tip of the papilla perforated by opening of the collecting ducts large of large number of collecting ducts are perforating this tip and this gives a cribri form appearance that's why it is called the area cribrosa another mcq is from embryology that is embryonic kidney develops from two different sources which become confluent at the junction of so we all know that the embryonic kidney develop from two sources first look at the options the ascending limb of the loop of henle and distal convoluted tubule descending and ascending limb of loop of henle and the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting tubules the proximal convoluted tubules and loop of henle renal corpuscles and proximal convoluted tubule so first please look at this diagram 
this is the condensed mesenchyme which is forming the uh, metanephric blastema or metanephric mesoderm which is forming the um, uh, system of the nephron and this is the ureteric bud which is forming the collecting system of the nephron so junction of both these two is present at the level of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct so here is the junction which is formed by the two different sources which are forming the metanephros or the permanent kidney now again fungiform papilla are present they are most abundant on the posterior third the anterior third dispersed throughout the dorsal surface of the tongue present on tip of the tongue forms rows on lateral edges again a little bit confusing question all of the option are same as we have seen in the previous slide in which we were discussing about the foliate papillas so remember foliate papillas are present um, on lateral edges and forming the rows while fungi form papilla are present on dorsum of the tongue and scattered in between the filiform papilla you can even see this fungi form papilla at red spots on naked eye examination of the tongue as well so correct option is c next is enorectal agenesis is usually associated with recto urethral fistula the embryologic basis of this fistula is so first understand this point this is the area of the cloaca or the um, proctodium which will forming the uh, hind gut and the end of the um, urinary system and urinary bladder and this is the area where urorectal septum is present and this urorectal septum is basically formed by the mesoderm over here this mesoderm condenses and it separates the cloaca into two the anterior part forming the urinary bladder and ureter and the posterior form part forming the hind gut so when there is a genesis of urorectal um, septum this will leads to abnormal partitioning of the cloaca and as a result of this the recto urethral fistula will be present which you can see in this diagram so both a and b options are correct in this case and please remember this is again an mcq from internal exam of some of the medical colleges and that's why i have taken it to just correct it because both of the two options are correct in this case next is what are the diverticuli of the mucosa of the gall bladder card that is these uh, mucosa are diverticuli of the mucosa may be ampulla of water no duct of lushka duct of wirsung's the rock stensky ash of sinuses or the sphincter of od so in this diagram you can say this is the mucosa and these are the diverticuli of the mucosa which are forming the rock stensky ash of sinuses next is following gastrointestinal tract structures undergo developmental rotation except the options are the stomach the duodenum the ventral pancreas mid gut and hind gut so we all know that the stomach rotates at, along the two axes then we also know the duodenum is a part of the mid gut and mid gut also rotate around the axis formed by the superior mesenteric artery then about the pancreas because pancreas is formed by the two buds the dorsal pancreatic bud and the ventral pancreatic bud and ventral pancreatic bud also rotates around the duodenum and come to lie behind the dorsal pancreatic but so in this case the hind gut is the only option which is left this is the organ which do not show any developmental rotation metanephric diverticulum that is the ureteric bud is derived from that is either from the mesonephric duct the metanephric mesoderm the somatic mesoderm the splanchnic mesoderm or the urogenital so very simple question a hint also present in the stem that is metanephric diverticulum is derived from the metanephric mesoderm the neonate diagnosed with the potter's syndrome again look at this scenario this is potter's syndrome Sh died shortly after birth 
what congenital anomaly was the most likely cause for the diagnosis that is bilateral renal agenesis the ectopic ureter the polycystic kidney multi cystic dysplastic kidney or the wilms tumor so please remember wilms tumor yes again it is another uh, cause of the renal genesis and death of the baby but it is not a feature of the porter's syndrome multi cystic dysplastic kidney and polycystic kidney both these condition can also lead to renal failure and death of the baby ectopic ureter is another development anomaly but with porter syndromes bilateral renal agenesis is related this is the feature of the porter syndrome and that's why it is the correct option next is which structure is present in middle of the liver uh, acinus that is acinus of rapaport that may be the bile duct the central vein hepatic artery lymphatic capillary or terminal branches of the portal triad so please i have um, explained in the lecture as well this is the acinus of rapaport a uh, um, diamond shape area it has a short axis and long axis and short axis form by the anastomosing branches of the terminal branches of the portal triad which is forming short axis and long axis are formed by the semin, uh, central vein also called the terminal hepatic venule so in this case the terminal branches of the portal triad are present in the center of the acinus of rapaport next mcq a very simple and very common in exams the enzyme disaccharide and dipeptidase are located in glycocalyx of which of the following gi tract that is appendix cecum colon ileum and rectum so we all know that uh, all of these fours are lined by the glycocalyx Uh, but only the disaccharide and dipeptidase are present in glycocalyx of ileum only so this is the correct option another very important mcq is that the which structures form borders of the space of dc are the disease space so in this diagram you can see this is the hepatocyte these are hepatocytes this is the space of dc and these are the sinusoidal epithelial cells along with kupfer cells which are present and these are forming the borders of the space of the dc so options are connective tissue cells itocells itocells are basically present within the space of dc they are not forming the borders the kupfer cell along with the sinusoidal epithelium and hepatocytes yes this is the correct answer the sinusoids alone are not responsible similarly the two hepatocytes they are forming but alone they are not Not, uh, forming the, they are forming the uh, boundaries of the space of DC, but the correct option over here is the C. This is the best option. Which gland contain this striated duct? A very simple question. The Brunner gland, the pancreas, sublingual, submandibular glands, and von Ebner. I have explained this many times in my lectures to you that the glands where we are going to modify the secretion, so we need striated duct. So in submandibular gland, which is a mixed gland but predominantly serous in nature, where we are going to modify the secretion, so here the striated ducts are present, and this is the correct option. the stability of the serous cells of the pancreas are difficult mcq so on options are the strong basophilia in subnuclear region and metachromatic granules in the apical area so in this diagram you can see these are so all the serous cells and this is the diagram of the pancreatic acinar serous cells which is present in which you can see the nucleus is present in basal area with the strong basophilia in the subnuclear region and apical area containing the zygomogen granules which are eosinophilic in nature so strong basophilia in subnuclear region and strong eosinophilia in apical cytoplasm is correct. correct option their basal part is basophilic and apical part is strongly basophilic so again this over here is wrong 
their basal part is eosinophilic and apical is basophilic this is opposite their basal part is eosinophilic and apical part is strongly eosinophilic again this is wrong so correct option is b what is the renal pyramid and associated cortex referred to? We know these are different renal pyramids and on sides of these renal pyramids, small amount of the connective uh, cortical tissue is present which is covering these renal pyramids and these are forming the lobes. So correct option is the lobe A. Next is the filtration slits are located between adjacent capillary endothelial cells. The capillary fenestrations, layer of the glomerular basement membrane, mesangial cells and podocyte food processes. So please look at this diagram first. Uh, this is a very um, important diagram. This is a filtration barrier. In this you can see these are the podocytes and their food process and in between the food processes of the Odocytes, the filtration slits are present and these uh, filtration slits are covered by the slit diaphragm. Then in the center you can see the combined basal lamina of the visceral uh, layer of the glomerular basement membrane and the uh, endothelial layer of the capillaries. Here you can see the endothelial cells of the capillaries and large fenestrations between the endothelial cells. So this is just a revision slide for the filtration barrier and correct option over here the filtration slits are present in between the podocytes food process so correct option is e over here next is region of the cortical parenchyma located between medullary pyramid rather than adjacent to surface of the kidney are called calyces the columns of protein medullary rays papillary uh, papillae are renal lobules so in this you can see these are the renal pyramids medullary pyramids and this is the cortical area which is present which is uh, forming the surface and these cortical areas are called columns of burden Next is at the beginning of each nephron is the renal corpuscle which is about 200 micrometer in diameter and containing tough tough capillaries. Name the type of the cells which cover the tough tough capillaries that may be the lysis cells, the podocyte, mesangial cells, macular densa cells or the JG cells. So look at this diagram, a very beautiful diagram in which you can see these are the uh, food processes of the podocytes and uh, on inside you can see these are the endothelial cells and here filtration barrier is present and these endothelial cells are covered by the food processes of the podocyte. The mesangial cell is present over here in the mesangium. Also, the less cells are present over here. So, correct option over here is the podocyte. Next MCQ is that macular densa typically have apical nuclei, basal Golgi complex system of ion channel and transporter pres uh, transporters present in the kidney. Name the tunica of efferent arteriole which will be modified to form macular tensa. A very simple question because we all know this is tunica media which is modified to form the, um, the macular tensa of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So in this diagram you can see this is the efferent arteriole. This one is the efferent arteriole. This is the efferent arteriole. And in this you can see the tunica media cells are uh, modified to form the macular. Uh, they are modified to form the cells of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The peritoneum is composed of which epithelium? A very simple question. This is simple squamous epithelium. The correct option is C. Next is visceral peritoneum is derived from which of the following mesoderm? Again, a very simple and important question from embryology. So this is the splanchnic mesoderm which is forming the visceral peritoneum. Next is the superior mesenteric artery supplies the abdominal organs derived from foregut, midgut, hindgut, ectoderm and endoderm. So we all know the artery of the foregut is 
ciliac artery artery of the mid cut is superior mesenteric and artery of the hind cut is inferior mesenteric so please remember this mcq can be present in exam in many different way either they may be asking about the artery of fore cut either the mid cut or hind cut and the options will be different so please remember fore cut supplied by ciliac artery ciliac trunk mid cut supplied by the superior mesenteric and hind cut supplied by the inferior mesenteric so correct option over here is B. Next is which is the name given to artery which divide to form arteriole in the kidney. This question although uh, related to gross anatomy but was present in histology section of some uh, internal exams of medical colleges so I have taken it. So the different options are the interlobar, interlobular, efferent arteriole, arcuate and efferent artery. So we know the uh, Mm, the efferent arteriole is formed by the branch of the interlobular artery and this is the correct option. The professor of anatomy was explaining the different congenital anomalies of the kidney during his lecture. The correct answer given by the student was so the ascent of horseshoe kidney is stopped by superior mesenteric this is not correct because it is inferior mesenteric which uh, can stop the ascent of the horseshoe kidney the multiple cysts are formed in polycystic kidney due to abnormal development of bowman's capsule no it is not correct pancake kidney is located in abdominal cavity a little bit uh, confusing option you know pancake kidney is a fused kidney also called the horseshoe shaped kidney which is present in lower lumbar region the arteries of the kidney are end arteries yes and the unilateral kidney the single kidney is not compatible with life this is again not con uh, correct because a unilateral even it is compatible with life also so here the correct option was d 15 years old male was surgically treated for the strangulated indirect inguinal hernia. The surgeon noticed that the small intestine was located in the right half of the abdominal cavity. Large intestine on left side. Cecum and appendix are in suprapubic position. Which of the following would cause this anomaly? So maybe duplication of intestine? No. Mixed rotation or no, mid cut volvulus, non rotation or reverse rotation. So, this is a non rotation of the mid cut which leads to all these anomalies. And this is end of the lecture. Wish you very best of luck for your exams in the block E and your profes uh, professional exams. Allah is till the next class.